Hey, what's going on everybody? Kerygma here and welcome to uh, our continued series on adding more DPS to your characters for beginners. Today we're going to be focusing on cursing and uh, we're going to be looking at uh, the, really the curses I have in this build um, more as examples, but uh, we're going to be talking about the different types of curses, um, how curses are applied, the order in which they're applied, and really why you want curses in, in, this in, in your build. So let, let's kind of jump into that and, and start talking about some of these uh, particular things. I'm going to try to keep this video uh, as condensed as possible because there is quite a bit of information and cursing to get to. So just bear with me a little bit and we're going to try to get through this uh, as fast as possible. So first and foremost, why do we want to curse enemies? Well, if you are running any type of build guide, I guarantee you there's probably some curse that exists in your build. Something from either like maybe like an assassin's mark or you may have a Warlord's Mark, or a Poacher's Mark, or you may be running Vulnerability in there, or you may have some, some Curse on Hit set up somewhere in your build, whether it be Bane or something like that, Temporal Chains. There, there are a lot of different curses that, that exist, and if you want the uh, full list of uh, curses that, that do exist, um, you can go check out the uh, Wikipedia page and be able to see the variety of curses that exist. Some of these you'll notice that you get affected by when you run in some maps. Uh, you'll see things like uh, players are cursed with elemental weakness or enfeeble or temporal chains, which absolutely sucks because I hate being slowed. Um, you may see some of these when you're running around in, in, in mass, but these are the, uh, the, the, the curses and every curse is, um, every curse is, is denoted by having that curse tag um, at the very top, spell, AOE, duration, and curse. So that's how you can find out what the variety of curses are. If you want to go talk to the vendor and see what curses that you have available to you, that's uh, that you can definitely do that and see the different types of curses. Um, curses act as debuffs to enemies. Um, that's how they're, we're, we're getting additional damage uh, against these enemies or some kind of additional modifier for our character and how we affect enemies because these are debuffing enemies. Like they kind of work in re kind of like a, in reverse to how our auras work. So our auras buff us like wrath and anger and hatred, um, zealotry. Uh, those things buff us individually as our characters. Um, but our curses are cursing our enemies and debuffing them so that they have some other effect uh, applied to them. For me. I love to use Assassin's Mark. It's one of my favorite curses in the game, and I like it because a lot of my builds uh, crit. And uh, enemies take increased damage from critical strikes when they're affected by Assassin's Mark, and I have a higher crit strike chance of enemies affected by Assassin's Mark. I also love the chance of gaining a power charge when I kill an enemy that's affected by Assassin's Mark, and I'm constantly getting life and mana back on kill for every time I kill a monster affected by Assassin's Mark. Again, one of my favorite uh, curses to use because I'm, I'm usually critting. Uh, so the, this is a big benefit when I see an enemy takes increased extra damage uh, from critical strikes. It's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of pretty big. Um, but you'll, you'll see other curses. Uh, uh, some people run Warlord's Mark. Uh, this basically uh, gives you mana and life leech uh, on attack where I was getting flat life and mana on kill with Assassin's Mark. On the attack, you get life leech percentage and mana leech percentage from those attacks uh, of enemies affected by Warlord's Mark. At the same time, uh, in making them more vulnerable to stun. So if you're stunning a build, uh, makes them more susceptible to being stunned and gives you that chance of that endurance charge on an enemy that is slain, that is cursed with Warlord's Mark. Poacher's Mark gives you flat life and mana um, when you hit one of these enemies cursed uh, with one of your attacks and you have a chance of gaining that frenzy charge uh, when they are uh, when they are slain and affected by poacher's mark and uh, at the same time it makes them less evasive um, and killing them revolts in more flash charges so you get your flash charges up, up more so if you want enemies to be less evasive so maybe you hit them more often poacher's mark is uh, is a good a good Way to go, plus that chance of frenzy charges, and on attack you get flat life and, and, and mana. If you're running physical builds, vulnerability may be what you're looking for, especially if you're running like a bleed build or something like that, and you're doing physical damage over time. Uh, 
This curse causes enemies to take increased physical damage um, and further increase physical damage over time. Plus, at the same time, these enemies have a chance of being maimed and increased enemy, uh, cursed enemies have increased um, chance to bleed from hits from these attacks. Uh, so, just kind of depending on, on what your what builds you're running depends on what kind of curse that you want to run in your build. Uh, my particular build, I am running a dual curse setup. So I do have the ability to curse twice in a build because I have Whispers of Doom allocated um, on my amulet. Um, as just a base character, if you do not have anything that says you can apply additional curse, your build can apply one curse. And that's it. You can't apply any more curses. If you have two curses in your build and you don't have the ability to apply additional curse, the curses, uh, the way that you curse enemies is going to be based on the curse setup and the trigger uh, and the trigger order. Um, and it typically um, is going to going to go based on, you know, whatever in it, whatever your second curse in that trigger order is, is probably going to be the primary curse and what 90 percent of the enemies are going to be affected by, especially if you are triggering a triggering a curse, uh, two curses at the exact same time. You don't have something like Whispers of Doom or maybe like a chest, like a hunter chest that says, hey, uh, you can apply additional curse. Um, it's going to go off the trigger effect and uh, whichever one is listed second in that is going to be the one that is going to take primary. It'll trigger the first and immediately trigger the second, overriding whatever the first is. So it's kind of how that kind of how that that works in sequence. So it uh, so for instance, let's say like I had um, I'm using curse on hit, and if I had two different curses listed in, in curse on hit, and so the curses get proc'd, the curse on hit gets proc'd, it, let's say, for instance, I had like poacher's mark and assassin's mark here, right? And uh, and curse, uh, curse on hit goes off. It's going to go in the order of the gym link. So um, if you're not familiar with that, that order kind of does matter. It works the way, same thing with your supports work. You're trying to figure out the right order you want your supports in. Um, kind of goes in the same order as the link goes. It'll do the same thing here. So Curse and Hit will go off, Poacher's Mark, and then Assassin's Mark. And Assassin's Mark is primarily just going to take over because it'll hit Poacher's Mark, and then it's going to hit with the Assassin's Mark. And uh, Assassin's would be what would take over in that particular situation. But again, having Whispers of Doom allocated on my amulet, which if you're looking for it, is in the top on a left hand corner up here in this little chaos wheel uh, uh, or curse wheel I should say uh, this is where you'll find whispers of doom two gold and a black on an amulet um, it's going to give you that additional curse or like I said if you don't want to spend that and if you have a hundred chest or if you have another item that says you can apply additional curse that's how you can add multiple curses uh, to enemies so what are some of the ways we can actually apply curses there there are four different ways of actually applying curses. Um, and the fourth is if you're using a minion, your minions can actually apply curses. And that does affect your overall curse total. So if you curse and your minions curse, depending on which curse triggers first, depending on which curse actually takes priority, right? Or, or whichever one triggers second, I'm sorry, is really going to be your, your, pri your priority. So if my minions were to curse, and they, they had the ability to curse, and then I cursed an enemy, my curse would overwrite theirs, the minions would overwrite mine, I would overwrite the minion. That's how that would work. Dual cursing um, would, would help kind of fix that issue if, you're, if you are running multiple curses, but that's, that's kind of how that, that works. Or if your minions curse and you don't really care about their curse, you care about the curse you're using, um, just know that they can overwrite your curse, you can overwrite their curse, and it will depend on the trigger order of the curse being used, depending on how that uh, to which curse you're going to get the buff benefits from. So minions applying is one way. Uh, another way of doing it is using as I am this curse on hit support. Um, and the way this support works is is it doesn't mean that if I sit here and attack like this with my character and I'm hitting them doing my main attack that they're going to be cursed because they're not. 
they're not going to be cursed that way because I don't have my curse on hit linked to my blade storm attack. So blade storm won't apply the assassin's mark curse. What will apply the assassin's mark curse is what I have linked to this uh, curse on hit support, which I have storm brand and I have my herald of ice. And let me just tell you why I have the setup as I have the, the setup. Um, I love using a herald attached to a curse when I'm using the uh, curse on hit setup uh, because as I'm running around in the maps and I'm killing stuff, things are dying. As my as my heralds proc and they they go off, they're what's applying the curse. And for instance, like uh, herald of ice, if you shatter an enemy, they explode and they deal AOE cold damage to enemies uh, near them. That explosion and that damage that it deals is uh, the Herald of Ice dealing damage. And on that explosion and the AOE damage it deals, it will curse enemies around them um, with Assassin's Mark. So they're constantly affected. All those get affected. So basically I can blow one enemy up, shatter that one. It's going to affect everything else. I blow those up. It becomes this domino effect of just keeping the whole map cursed and allows you just to flow through it. And then I'm constantly getting all of the beautiful things that you can get with assassin's mark from the power charges from the life on kill the man on kill with uh all these enemies taking all this extra damage from critical strikes and increasing my chance to just pop them a little harder uh with that chance for that additional critical strike uh, so i i love that and, and running around in maps but against the single target uh like a boss that doesn't have anything around it for me to explode my herald isn't going to curse those enemies at all. So like if you're fighting Awakener, there are never any adds that come along in that fight. So there's nothing for you to kill uh, and shatter that would allow Awakener to ever get hit with, uh, with the curse. So in this particular setup, if that is the only way I had to curse, uh, I wouldn't be able to curse Awakener. He would never take uh, any... I, I would get no benefit from that whatsoever, which is why I use... A secondary skill like Stormbrand for the single target, and I can uh, I can use Stormbrand, and, I, and I'll show you what I'm what I mean by that. I can uh, by using um, by using Stormbrand and casting it, you'll notice that the enemies will just get cursed, and I have all my buffs turned off at the moment, and that's on purpose. And let me just show you. So I attach this, and you see this little uh, mark come above their heads. This is how I know these enemies are, are, are cursed. And if you'll notice, I'm getting all the beautiful things um, just by casting um, just by casting uh, my um, Stormbrand. It links onto them, and it, 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 it will curse them. So against a boss, I know I'm going to curse a boss being able to do that. Um, another thing that you can do is use a Blasphemy support. And this is a really, really cool support. I, I It's one of my favorite things to use if, if I can actually fit it into the build. Uh, but it requires you to be able to reserve some mana because um, it, it's going to reserve mana. It basically will turn any curse you have into an aura. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to replace curse on hit, take it out, and put in blasphemy. And then I'm going to turn on assassin's mark. And as you'll notice, um, my character now has this little aura around him. And what's cool... It's just by running around, um, you go find some mobs, boom, they get cursed. I'm just running around, and, and they automatically have that curse applied to them because of the uh, because of the aura. But if you'll notice, it reserves 35% mana uh, just, to, just to be able to do that. But it is actually a, a, a pretty cool... Um, a pretty cool little support to use, and it will actually handle cursing enemies for you. What's great about that is you don't have to worry about hitting something to curse it because it's an aura. Anything in the radius of that aura is going to be cursed. So even like Awakener would take would would be affected by the curse as long as you're near. He's in that radius. He's going to be affected by that curse. So it is kind of a, it is kind of a pretty cool support to use. Um, and I think you can actually use it before um, Curse on Hit. Uh, if you're like leveling and you want to get something cursed, I think Curse on Hit is like 30, 38. I think mine's leveled up though. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's 38 and this is 31. 
at, at base level. So you can use it a little earlier and run around and, and have everything cursed. Uh, and it's actually, it's actually kind of cool. Uh, actually really, really, really cool for, for leveling and really cool for using and, and mapping and, and later on too, if you have the room for it. But with everything that I, I typically turn on, I don't have a lot of mana left. I definitely don't have 35%, uh, left to be able to use, uh, to be able to use blasphemy. So we talked about curse on hit support, kind of how it works. We've talked about blasphemy support, how it works. And we know the menu are some, some minions have the ability to curse too. If you have that, that setup linked, um, another way of cursing is just flat out having a, Curse enemies with level something curse on hit. Now this is a corruption on my gloves that gives me this potential, th this curse. That means on my attack, my attack itself will actually handle that curse. It's one of the reasons that if you look at a lot of build guides, you see, um, you see builds that use curse on hit rings. One, it frees up. A gym setup. I don't have to. I wouldn't have to potentially use. Um, I wouldn't have to use curse on hit. I wouldn't have to have an assassin's mark. I could use stormbrand and maybe put power charge on critical strike on stormbrand. And since I would curse on hit with the uh, if I had like a curse on hit assassin's mark ring, uh, if I'm fighting a boss, which I won't get power charges. Um, I'm not going to get power charges from assassin's mark because you only get those on kill. You could then use like a storm brand with a power charge on hit support, attach that, and as it critically struck, you get your power charges that way. I have seen that setup work a lot. Um, so you will see people use um, curse on hit rings, very uh, effective way of um, of cursing enemies uh, because that, that curses on this hit. You don't need anything else to worry about cursing the enemies on your attack, your main attack you will be cursing those enemies. Um, so those are the different ways of actually applying curses. Now, order of curses. So in this particular instance, I have curse on hit support and I have curse on my hits. What actually goes off first? Well, let's say they're both procced at the same time. The way it works is blasphemy support if that is what you're, if, if you have it, basic will always override any other curse that exists because it's an aura and it's constantly going off. So I can curse something and a blasphemy will immediately take over and whatever I have attached to it, it, it would go away. So I, if I was self-casting a curse, right, a near an enemy, blasphemy would take off that curse and put on its own curse if I could only apply one curse. But in this build, I can apply two. So let's say both go off. So and we're not using blasphemy, but just future reference, blasphemy is always first. First, last, law, right? Um, the way it would go would be my curse on hit, whatever is attached to this support goes first, then my curse on my gloves would go second, or if I had curse on a ring, it would go next. So if I could only apply one curse and I was using a curse on hit, the curse that would effectively be taking over would be uh, the curse on my gloves because it applies second. And if I didn't have the ability to curse twice, it would overwrite my first curse. So um, whatever whatever curse is going off second can overwrite whatever, whatever the other curse is if you don't have the ability to dual curse. So that is how that, that that's kind of how that order uh, works or that trigger order would work if you didn't have everything linked up like that if i had like if i had two curses like let's say these gloves were double corrupted and i just hypothetically i had uh the elemental weakness on top and then right below that i had assassin's mark i don't know if that's possible but let's just say if, hypothetically it is um i had those two curses there it's going to go in the order that they read so it would go elemental weakness first assassin's mark next uh, if i only could apply one Assassins would always overwrite the curse, uh, the element of weakness, meaning that's going to be this, the the curse itself that would basically um, take over. So that that's kind of that order of operations. If you are running around with another player, so you've got to have somebody in your party, you have the ability to apply two curses. Your buddy only has ability for one curse. 
if you were to curse an enemy with both of your curses, um, and he were to curse with one of his, he would overwrite your two curses, and they would only be cursed with one curse. The uh, can't apply additional curse only affects you as a character. It doesn't jump across party members, right? So he would over you would he would overwrite your two curses and apply one curse. Um, if you had two people in a group and both of you had the ability to apply two curses, it's going to be who applied their two curses second would overwrite the other two curses. And that's how basically how that works. You can't have an enemy cursed with um, four curses because they only have two. You only have two. That doesn't mean you, we can put four curses out there. It, it's only it's going to take whatever the, the second person is a curse. That's always going to be the... That, that order your curse first they will overwrite your curses so that, that's kind of how that works but this is important because for the longest i never figured out it took me a, a long time to figure out why i wasn't damaging bosses the way i thought i should be damaging and they just simply weren't cursed i would have like a three link setup something just very similar to this I, I, I didn't have this i didn't understand this i didn't understand why i needed this i never I never cast this, and when I watch streams, I never saw anybody really use this. Um, and I was like, I don't understand why why, why I, I need that when everything is obviously getting cursed with my Herald of Ice uh, running around or my Herald of whatever while, while I run around. Well, I mean, the reason is because this thing go off against bosses, and I, would, I wouldn't have that extra damage. So having something like a Stormbrand or whatever other skill you want to use, uh, it doesn't matter what skill you use as long as you have something here that can apply apply that curse. Um, it, 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 it's a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous help um, and, and, and buff. And and look, this, um, this Stormbrand um, uh, is going to get affected by the, the, the curse on hit as well. So it, it can apply both curses just by me attaching that, that, that Stormbrand. So, uh, I hope this makes sense. Like, I, I hope this this kind of sinks in a little bit into how cursing can work in this game, and the benefits that, that you can have from from cursing enemies, and just the order uh, of curses that that can be applied. If you if you ever kind of wondered, um, if you're wondering how like uh, the mathematical equation for how curses work, it exists on the wiki. I'll link the wiki in the description but here, here it is um if you want to go kind of do the math on your character to figure out you know you know what your curse is, is going to look like uh you can you can do that um and ju just check it out here it's kind of a kind of interesting formula i know it looks uh, it looks very complicated but it, it's really not as complicated as it looks these symbols just stand for for something very very simple like, uh, you know, the added sum or the product of, right? They're basic math concepts that you've been doing your entire life. Uh, if you want to see how they're actually used, just click on the symbols. It'll take you to a wiki of all the symbols. Find these symbols, and they'll have examples and help you see, oh, these aren't near as complicated as I as I thought they would, uh, I thought they would actually be. So um, if, you wanna, if you want me to do a video on how this actually works, I'd be happy to. And I'll break down the whole formula, but uh, it's really not necessary um, to to go through that. But there's a ton of good information also in curses on here, um, so uh, be sure to check that out as well. And uh, just looking at this real quick, there was one other point I did want to talk about um, when running around, uh, and uh, it is modifiers that can affect. Um, your your enemies that really severely hinder your uh, hinder your curses. Like uh, for instance, hexproof monsters can't be cursed, um, or immune to curses that, that they can't be cursed. You'll notice things that have less curse effect on them. Just like base, like look at this. I mean that's that's ridiculous. Elder guardians, the shaper guardians. If you're wondering why these bosses are a hell of a lot harder than they used to be, outside of the added life and the resistances that they got, boom. 60% less curse effect on these enemies. That's, that's, that's quite a lot. Um, that, that, that's quite a lot. And there, there is a map mod. Um, and I believe it's like enemies um, can be affected by elemental ailments. If that map mod exists, your herald never goes off because 
you're not freezing these enemies. Uh, they're not going to shatter. And so your hair, uh, so your curse on hit won't go off. If you see that map mod and you notice you're not gaining power charges or your mana is not regenerating as fast as you thought it would, it's good at that point to start pushing with whatever your secondary, um, whatever your secondary is. So you may cast Stormbrand ahead of time, and then keep moving through and attacking. Everything will, will then get the curse applied to it. Um, if you use Stormbrand, you can also pull in Brand Recall which at any point you can hit, it'll pull those, um, it will pull your, your brands on top of you um, for that immediate effect uh, of having those brands there um, if you need if you need that as well. It's also pretty helpful if you want to try to fit it into your build as well. But hopefully th this answers a, a lot of questions on, on curses. Um, I hope I didn't overly complicate this video. Um, but if you have any questions, comments, and if I said anything wrong, um, I think I think I've covered everything. I've been over all this information, and and this should be all right. But if, if there's something you want to add, please feel free to leave it to leave a comment. I try to respond to every comment there is. And if you have a suggestion for a video that you want me to do, hey, leave a comment below, and uh, I'll be happy to uh, be very 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 happy to to work on a video for that. I apologize for this one taking so long to get out. It's just been a hell of a week uh, for me, and. Um, but hey, here it is. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much. And uh, hey, if you liked the video, uh, leave a like. Uh, feel, uh, hope you subscribe. And hey, follow me on Twitch and uh, Twitter. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much. Y'all have a good one.